Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding topics. We're gonna start though with this one, it's about Nick Walker, and actually an update where he shows us his back, his back lat spread, but also right there in the corner you can see his reflection from the front in that mirror, and you can see what his stomach, what his gut looks like when he's not paying attention to it, when he's not trying to control it, or should I say, what his stomach actually looks like. Now, I watched Nick Strength and Powers video on this topic, and he made some pretty good arguments. What he said basically was, Nick Walker is controlling his midsection very well on stage. He's pretty much known for having a very developed midsection, which I agree 100% with. And he said that Nick Walker is really efficient at controlling his midsection in the transitions. So basically when he is competing, when he is on the stage, it doesn't matter if he is posing or he is standing relaxed or he is walking out of the stage or coming into the stage or just in the transitions, you never really see him with a relaxed gut, with a huge bubble gut. You don't really see that on stage. And that is all true, I completely agree with that, but is bodybuilding really happening only on bodybuilding stages, like on bodybuilding shows? If all you ever saw of Nick Walker was in bodybuilding competitions, then great, you would never see his bubble gut. But unfortunately for him, bodybuilding is not only happening at bodybuilding shows, it's probably, you can say, mainly happening on social media, really. Like back in the day it was all about how you do well, how well you do on the shows and depending on that you might uh, appear in the magazines and that was what it was all about. Today, not even close, today it's all about social media. So bodybuilding is mainly watched, mainly followed on the internet these days, on these platforms like YouTube, like Instagram. So if you ever see a bodybuilder, a top bodybuilder having a a gut, a huge distension like this, then it's definitely not a great thing. And it is what it is, I mean, that's him, that's Nick Walker, he obviously, apparently, has a huge gut, but then again, that's what his physique is like, like, that's it, that, that's him, you need to accept that, we need to accept that, Nick is a bodybuilder with a humongous bubble gut. However, he's trying and he's successful at hiding it pretty well. I mean, in that photo, I don't think he even noticed what was on that photo, in that angle, in that mirror. If he saw it, he probably wouldn't post that. So, when he's posting photos, he's posting stuff like this. These kind of photos where his midsection actually looks pretty tight. You can see it more on stage that he has a blocky waist than you can see on the pics that he posts. Because he really chooses them carefully. He wants to show us that he actually has a, I wouldn't say small midsection, small waist, but, you know, that he's working on it, and he's, he's good at doing it. Now, the reason why he has a bubble gut is partly genetic, sure, he has a wide waist, so his stomach area is simply larger than it is at other competitors, majority of them, however, the reason why his stomach is that big, he has a bubble gut, is not only genetic, like, sure, he has a potential for it, but also it has to do with him simply trying to grow as much as he did, not just by eating a lot of food and lifting crazy heavy, but also, I heard this from many bodybuilders uh, who had these kind of issues, it happens when you use a lot of GH and insulin. I don't know how, I don't know why, I don't have experience with it, but I heard that many times. So that probably has something to do with that. However, I mean, he did what he had to do to get this big, to get this uh, competitive, to get to be third in the Mr. Olympia stage. With his structure, he couldn't do well in classic, and he definitely wouldn't do well in the open if he wasn't as big as he is. So he became what he became. He became a mutant. He became a really freaking big, freaky bodybuilder. And that was the only way that he can become this good. Along with that came that bubble gut, he has it, we need to accept that he has it, and he needs to try his best, as he's already doing, at hiding it on stage. Because, after all, that is the thing that matters the most, but I made this video because I was really surprised when I saw this, because, I mean, I knew he had a little bit of a distension, but this much, 
I wasn't expecting a turtle shell, literally, on his on his stomach uh, when he turns around and when he's not paying attention to it. I wasn't expecting this, but it is what it is. This is the fact, this is what is happening, and this is him very depleted. So imagine what it looks like in the off-season. Again, who cares what it looks like in the off-season? And me personally, I'm a big fan of the freaks. I love to see a freak show, but some people wouldn't be too happy with this. For example... Arnold Schwarzenegger, I don't know if this is gonna get to Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, I think he only cares what he sees on the stage, I don't think he cares about what is there out there on the social media, on Instagram and stuff like that, but I think he already spoke about bodybuilders having big guts relaxing in the backstage and stuff like that, like that's also wrong, like he should never have this kind of stuff happening, like he should always look fit and have a small waist, tight midsection and not a humongous beer belly like this, I mean this is bodybuilding, it is supposed to be about the best possible looking humans in the world, that was what it was, that's what it was about when it started, but obviously it turned to a freak show, some people don't like it, some people like it, it is what it is, I just wanted to show this to you guys, to tell you what I think, and to hear what you guys think, whatever your opinion is on this, tell me, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section, I'm really curious, what do people think about this stuff? Alright, so next we have an update of Sean Clarida, that's right, we are 4 weeks, less than 4 weeks out of Arnold Classic, and this is one of the potential winners, of this show, yes, that's Sean Clarida, he's 180 pounds, uh, he's a small bodybuilder, but he's a 212 champion, for his frame, he's a huge bodybuilder, he brings crazy conditioning always, and as you can see, this is him right now, uh, this was at the East Coast Mecca, there was a seminar, I don't know, Jay Cutler was there, Sadiq Hadjovic, I don't know who, al who else, a lot, of, a lot of popular big names, and Sean Clarida was there as well, so he did some posing, and you can see exactly what he looks like at 4 weeks out, and I gotta say, his conditioning is spot on, like, he's probably even more conditioned than, I don't know, Nick Walker, I mean, he's right there, he really doesn't have any body fat to lose at this point, I think it's all about uh, getting him harder, fuller, uh, rounder, I mean, he's a little bit flat, maybe, or is it just the lighting, I don't know, I have no doubts that Sean Clarida is gonna bring his absolute best, I mean, he always peaks, like, like, insane, like, no, nobody peaks as well as Sean Clarida, like, when was the last time we saw him uh, failing a peak week? Never, never, really, and yeah, he's coached by Matt Jansen, Matt Jansen is also kind of known for always hitting the peak, not necessarily always, but majority of the time, like, he, he's one of those coaches who don't really miss uh, and I'm sure they figured out a formula that Sean Clarida is gonna be on point at the Arnold Classic, he's gonna be at his absolute best, as far as conditioning and muscularity and stuff like that, you can see that he's definitely spot on for 4 weeks out, um, his stomach looks a little bit uh, weird, but I think that's just what it looks like 4 weeks out, I don't think he was really flexing it, uh, maybe, maybe the photo was taken in the wrong moment, but like overall, as far as muscularity, roundness, uh, conditioning, everything is on point, so I'm sure we're gonna see the best possible version of Sean Clarida on that stage, how well is he gonna do, that's really freaking hard to tell, uh, you can see him from this angle as well, it's a little bit better shadow, uh, he looks a little bit uh, harder, fuller, better here, so, like, again, he's really freaking conditioned, I have no doubt in my mind that he's gonna bring his absolute best on that stage, again, how well will he place, well, if you consider that, if you consider the fact that he's probably gonna bring his absolute best, then how sure can we be that the other guys are gonna bring their absolute best, can we count on everybody else in that top 5, top 6 bringing their A game? I, I doubt that's gonna happen, so in all likeliness there are some bodybuilders who are bigger than Sean, who can beat him on certain days, but they probably won't bring their absolute best, so in my opinion, I think Sean is gonna be third or fourth, 
Now, I have in my top three, I have Samson Andrew and uh, Nick Walker. I think Sean Clarida is probably going to beat Big Remy. Yeah, I know Big Remy. I know how big he is and how much he's going to dwarf uh, Sean Clarida, but I think he lost too much muscle. He has so many issues with his physique, like so many muscles atrophied and stuff like that. Like, I don't expect him to bring uh, something that good, and I expect Sean to bring his absolute best. And size alone is not gonna do it, man. Like, there is Morgan Asti, who is bigger than all of these guys, but he doesn't win shows because he's not complete, and Big Remy is not complete anymore. Can he fix his problems for the Arnold Classic? I don't think so. And I do think Sean is gonna bring his absolute best once again. <laughs> I said a thousand times. So, I think Sean Clarida is gonna be battling for that third. Now, I, I don't see him beating Samson, Andrew, and Nick Walker, but, you know, chances are that one of those guys can be a little bit off, and that will probably be enough for Sean to take over to beat them. So, I think if all of those three guys are on, then he's gonna be fourth. If not, he's gonna be third or second, or potentially even win the show if everybody else is off, which I don't think is very likely to happen. So, again, in my estimate... He's battling for third or fourth. We'll see uh, soon enough. However, I gotta say once again, right now, he does look really awesome. Now, who do I think is actually gonna win this thing? Look, I bet on Andrew Jacked. I think he's gonna do it. I think he's gonna do it. I think he's gonna look absolutely mind-blowing. Because look at him right now. Look at what he looks like right here in the gym. Just relax, not even flexing. I mean, the lighting is great, but still, like, he looks insane. And again, he has a new team. He has one of the best coaches in the world, Chris Asito. And he has Chris Cycle Lewis training him, pushing him to the max. So this is gonna be, I think this is gonna be 100% of Andrew Jack. And what 100% of Andrew Jack looks like on stage, I think it looks good enough to beat all of these guys, really. I feel like shape is something that is being rewarded currently in bodybuilding. I think it was ignored for a little bit for some time, but I think it's making a comeback right now. So as you can see, in the open, in the second place, you had Derek Lansford. Now Derek is humongous, he's really big, he brought great conditioning, he's very complete and everything like that, but also he has amazing shape. Hari Japan, also pretty good shape, you know, he has a pretty good, decent wee taper, overall, okay shape, like, he's not super, super blessed, yeah, he's a little bit blocky, a little bit short, stuff like that, but he does have a pretty good shape, a Big Ramy doesn't have a good shape, so he was 6th, you have Samson Dauda, in that, actually, Big Ramy was 5th, but Samson was in top 6, uh, he made a big leap, because, I think, like, one of the biggest reasons was his shape, Andrew Jack was in 8, but he already won a couple of shows before that, I don't think it was mainly because of shape, I think it was because of his conditioning and muscularity and everything like that, but really, shape is something that is being more uh, looked at, more rewarded these days, and something that is talked about more, and me personally, I think shape should be one of the biggest factors in these bodybuilding shows, Arnold Schwarzenegger agrees with me 100%, he also believes in the same thing, shape is really important, we don't want bottle-shaped physiques, we want wee tapers, we want beautiful looking physiques with great shapes, and there are guys today, we have a, a lot of good guys with great shape, again, Samson, Andrew, and Derek Lansford as well, now in this lineup you have Nick Walker who has a horrible shape, really, let's be honest, like, he's not exactly uh, an aesthetic guy, I mean, not at all, he's complete opposite, he's a freak, he's a mass monster, so, in this lineup, in this show, I'm pretty sure shape is gonna be awarded more than in the other shows, and also, today, I think shape is more appreciated, and aside from the shape, I feel like Andrew is gonna bring his absolute best, in terms of conditioning, in terms of muscularity, I think he's going to be blasting full, I think he's going to bring great conditioning, he's going to be shredded, and I think Andrew Jacked at 100% is pretty much unbeatable. I mean, I can still see guys like Hari Chopin 
and like uh, Derek Lansford if they are at 100% still beating Andrew Jack, but not the other guys, personally, no, I don't think so. I think if Andrew Jack was what he can be, if he had this team, if he wasn't sick, if he was 100% at the Olympia, he would have placed third, in the top three, somewhere in the top three, that's what I believe. And I believe he's gonna bring that, what we are waiting for, to the Arnold Classic stage, and he's going to win that show. If you guys disagree with me, you can tell me down below, or if you agree, you can also tell me that. If you guys enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up, and for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.